Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Melvin, and this week we're going to do uh, the Elemental Nova Sorcerer using Spark Charge to just absolutely dumpster trash mobs. Uh, this uses the Spark Charge chance from the Elemental Nova, as well as an item called Fragment of the Enigma, to absolutely speed through echoes and handle bosses. Uh, upsides of this build are that it has fantastic mobility. We use teleport uh, since it also casts Elemental Nova for us. Uh, so we just zoom through maps. We have great clear. Typically most groups of monsters will die as soon as you Goomba stomp them with teleport. Um, some of our downsides though are that the survivability is at least so far only decent. Uh, the mage and the sorcerer passive trees really lack a lot of like great defensive scaling uh and our boss clear is also only decent uh we do have to supplement elemental nova with lightning blast in a lot of cases because we run out of mana fairly quickly um, but it's decent not bad so that's kind of what it is. Getting into the skills, we're going to start with our primary skill, Elemental Nova. This is what we use to clear basically everything we can from trash mobs. We even use it quite frequently on bosses simply because the spark charge from it is so strong. Uh, this provides great clear uh, because it is a Nova skill, particularly with the teleport synergy that we have going on. It's fantastic. Um, so whenever you're leveling this skill up, getting the spark charge first is absolutely paramount. This is going to help you leveling. This is going to help you in the end game. Just an all-around great choice. Uh, after that, I go for the penetration through the Fire Nova node. Uh, it's up to 70%. This is basically a 70% more damage at its worst. So absolutely key that you get this. Uh, after that, you can go for the base crit chance in the spark or, or, or in the lightning nova side, uh, providing up to 9% base crit chance. Uh, and then I finish it off with one point into frost nova. This is optional if you want to do it other ways, but it does provide us some great synergy with the passives, dragon mage, and warder in the sorcerer tree, so I do recommend it. Next up is Teleport. This is our primary mobility skill. Uh, it's great for mobility, but we also use it to proc uh, Elemental Nova at Arrival, Departure, and in the middle, which means that with the full Spark Charge chance from the Elemental Nova, as well as an item called Fragment of the Enigma, if you teleport in place, this deals three Elemental Nova damage uh, procs, as well as four spark charges, which is just an absolutely insane amount of burst. Uh, and is actually primarily what we use to kill high health monsters, as well as in our clear. So in this tree, we're going to uh, nab the elemental nova nodes as primary. Um, and then I like the, the ward gain is nice since you are teleporting onto things. So grab the ward gain as well as the ward gain from intelligence. Uh, and then from there you have some flexibility. I like the mirror images just to provide a little bit of extra protection since they do taunt. Uh, but you can also go for mana, mana efficiency and then the teleport cooldown recovery uh, if that option appeals to you. I will recommend against getting the global cooldown buff. It's only 5%. The only thing it affects is your flame ward. It's not worth it, honestly. Third, we're going for flame ward. This is our primary defensive skill. Uh, and if you have enough intelligence, probably around 30 to 40, maybe a little bit higher, then you're basically going to want to use this on cooldown simply because the ward lasts for such a long time. Uh, in the tree, we're going for duration, ward per second, ward retention while active, the additional ward on use, and then less damage from hits and less damage from elemental damage. Um, 
it's important, I feel, that you go purely defensive with this tree uh, because we get so little defense from our passives, so we have to rely on equipment for most of it, uh, and this really helps supplement that equipment. Uh, I know that the damage is super tempting. I think it makes you way too squishy to be able to survive with the play style that this build has. Uh, our fourth skill is Static. This is mostly to provide some extra scaling via the Lightning Blast, Lightning Blast Discharge node. Uh, particularly once or if you get Static Charge gained per second idols, then you're just having an additional Lightning Blast all the time, which we'll talk about that tree later. Uh, for this tree, I like the Ward on Use, just to provide a, that little bit of extra protection uh, and then uh, charges gained on movement speed as well to just constantly make sure you're at that max for the lightning blast. Uh, and then finally, I go for some extra flat damage simply for lack of compelling option. Uh, you really shouldn't be using this skill that often. Having it proc the lightning blast is, I feel, a lot more powerful than the skill itself, particularly given the extra cooldown we give it because we're going for the ward. Uh, so use this fairly infrequently unless you need to burst down something huge. The final skill we're specializing into is Lightning Blast. This is great for your single target damage and your clear if your mana is running low. So in this tree, we're going to pick up Spark Charge Chance and Spark Nova on hit, uh, again, for some additional scaling, and they both really help out with your clear. Uh, we're gonna go with the double end quad cast on direct cast for, again, kind of clear, but mostly single target damage. Uh, and then if you have an extra point floating around somewhere, or if you want to take a point from something else, then grab closed circuit. Uh, this provides you some extra damage as well as some extra crit chance with lightning blast since it can chain off of you. So that's also a huge help uh, if you have the points to spare for it. In terms of passives, we're mostly going having to go offense because there's not really a lot of defensive mage nodes that I feel are worth it. There's a lot of like get seven ward on using a skill, but that's not super helpful in kind of a late game situation. So starting with the mage tree, uh, grab health, stick two points in the intelligence and resists. Uh, you're gonna go five points in the cast speed, which has the added benefit of lowering teleports cooldown. Uh, and then we're gonna put all 10 points in the crit chance and crit multiplier node to kind of round out this tree. In the sorcerer tree, you wanna go with intelligence with uh, increased crit per intelligence. Again, just more crit scaling. Uh, we're gonna go with afterglow for spell damage and ward retention, and then Serranomancer and Rift, uh, Rift Bolt for lightning damage, shock chance, lightning pin, and leech, since lightning damage is our primary form of damage, even though we also do uh, Fire Nova and Frost Nova. Chronomancy is going to help with our health via Vitality, and the shock duration is only somewhat relevant, and the chill or freeze duration and the ignite duration are basically irrelevant entirely. Uh, spell Splinger gives us flat spell damage and increased mana regen. The Elemental Ascension node gives us a whole dearth of stuff with resists, damage, and then somewhat relevant stun chance, particularly if you're going to teleport into a group of enemies that you aren't sure will just instantly die. Uh, Archmage at the very top of the tree gives us more flat damage. Uh, the 200 mana requirement for the tripled effect is pretty trivial to hit. Uh, Warder and Dragon Mage are passives that I mentioned earlier, they give us ward and increased damage based on the elemental skill use, uh, which is why I feel that the point, the single point for Frost Nova in the Elemental Nova tree is so important. Uh, and then we're going to stick two points into Arcane Insight for the Insight chance, giving which gives us elemental damage and ward retention. Uh, this tree is mostly offensive, very little defense, so we're going to have to pick up the defense in the items or the blessings. 
speaking of items, we're going to start with probably the most powerful item for this build, period. Uh, this is Fragment of the Enigma. This is a unique offhand catalyst. This item is absolutely bonkers in terms of the utility it provides us. Uh, the only thing that's bad on this is the damage for melee attacks, but everything else is awesome. You get plus one to lightning skills, uh, spark charge chance, spark charge, spark charge area. It's great. The other great thing about this item is that you can target farm it fairly early uh, whenever you're doing monoliths uh, by going through the stolen lance, which is the second lowest level monolith whenever you're starting out. So it's absolutely super easy to get. This should be the first item you should really farm for. Uh, and in fact, I would probably say farm for it before you go any further into monoliths, unlock stolen lance, and then get this item. And then from there, everything should be pretty smooth sailing. The second item that I really want to talk about, that a specific item, is the Invoker Static Touch. This is a pretty common set ring. Uh, so you have a decent enough chance of finding it before you even get to Monoliths. Uh, so check your set rings. The item itself is medium with the base only giving us mana and mana regen, uh, but it does provide some flat spell damage, some flat lightning spell damage particularly, uh, and the plus one to level of static is nice, but really the reason we're grabbing this item is for the chance to gain ward when hitting a shocked enemy, and then some shock chance on hit. Uh, but the ward, to, the ward this provides is a nice defensive tool until you can find something that works for your build better, whether it's just an awesome offensive ring, an awesome defensive ring, a mixture of the two. Uh, this ring should probably be fairly temporary, even though I'm still using it in Empowered. Uh, but I guess that just shows the power that this ring can have. Uh, and then for general item use, uh, you want to go for crit scaling, either increased crit chance or... Uh, Critical Multiplier, both of those work. Uh, I will note that for Elemental Nova in particular, if you use the tree I recommend, then you are gonna have a plus 9% to flat. So you will crit cap on Elemental Nova fairly quickly, but that doesn't mean that you crit uh, cap on Spark Charge or Lightning Blast or anything else. So you may want to go a little bit over crit crap for Elemental Nova just to bring your crit chance for the other skills up a lot higher. Uh, secondary to that, you want to go for spell damage or elemental damage. For the purposes of this build, those two are the exact same. Uh, both provide more scaling for your crits or non-crits in general. Uh, and then lightning damage is a distant fourth. Primarily, we deal lightning damage via static, lightning blast, spark charge, uh, lightning nova, spark nova. But we do have some non-lightning damage in there. So if you can, go for spell damage, go for elemental damage. And then if you need to, you can go with lightning damage. Uh, for our defenses, you really want to focus on health. Uh, and then resist until you can get them from your blessings. Uh, and then you need to fit crit avoidance in there somewhere, either through the blessings or through just uh, affixes on your gear. There's not really any other specific gear that I think is super necessary to this build other than Fragment of the Enigma and Invoker Static Touch whenever you're first starting out. But that's it for this build guide. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the build guide. I hope you enjoyed the build itself. Please let me know in the comments below. If you give it a shot and let me know what you think about the build guide, let me know if you have any improvements you suggest. I'm always willing to take feedback. Uh, please like and subscribe if you liked it. Uh, and yeah, I stream on Twitch, uh, same name. Uh, I often stream builds I'm working on. I'm trying to stream for five days a week. So you can find me Monday through Friday. Typically I just start uh, around 11 EST go until about six. There is some flexibility there depending on, you know, real life and such. 
but I certainly give it an honest effort every day, uh, every weekday to stream. So come check me out there, chat, hang out. If you have questions about this build or anything else, uh, find me and we'll talk about it. But again, thanks you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.